The local election result in Northern Ireland sent shockwaves through British politics. Voters handed Republican Party Sinn Féin a historic victory, and now for the first time, Northern Ireland has a nationalist first minister, a first minister who wants a united Ireland, but that means a disunited UK. It's an impossible problem for the UK government, and the nationalists have seized on it. Well, I'm joined now by Douglas Murray, who's written extensively on Irish nationalism. So, Douglas, I was going to, uh, and I will get to this, talk to you about the campaign to cancel Winston Churchill, which you've written brilliantly about in your superb new book. We will get to that. But a lot of breaking news in the last 24 hours I want to I sort of bring together with you, if I may, because it's all sort of constitutional. We have what's happened in Northern Ireland with Sinn Féin becoming the dominant party. We also have the Queen cancelling the state opening of Parliament indicating that she is in a very poor way in terms of her health. Mm. That raises the spectre of what happens after the Queen, what happens to the monarchy, what happens to the United Kingdom with what's happening in Ireland and indeed in Scotland. What's your take on all this? And you know, If you're going to look forward to, say, 10 years' time, will there be a monarchy? Will there be a United Kingdom? There'll be a monarchy. Um, I would worry about the United Kingdom in these uh, circumstances. As you say, Piers, I mean, the, the gains Sinn Féin made uh, in the local elections, historic gains, uh, should be troubling to anyone who is, like me, a unionist. Um, Sinn Féin, of course, is an Irish nationalist party and is as well, in my own view, an extremist party. Uh, and that isn't uh, mere rhetoric. Uh, you know, Mary Lou Macdonald, the head of Sinn Féin, um, has an unbelievable track record. I mean, just, just that you mentioned Nazis earlier. You know, there's only one statue to a Nazi in Europe, and it sits in the park in Dublin. Uh, Sean Russell, an IRA member who died on a German Nazi U-boat in 1940. There's a statue to him in Dublin, and Sinn Féin always pay their, um, their respects there. Mary Lou Macdonald, a couple of years ago, was taken there to pay her respects. She was, as it were, bloodied by the more, the more militant wings of Sinn Féin. Uh, that's totally normal in Sinn, Sinn Féin history. It's not just that they were an extremist party in the past, it's that they are in the present. It's not just that they're Irish nationalists, that they are actually extreme Irish nationalists. Nationalists, violent Irish nationalists always have been and seem to continue to be. I think it's an incredibly worrying development. As you say, alongside the, the uh, ongoing success uh, electorally of the Scots nationalists in, in, uh, in the north, it's, uh, it's certainly possible we could see the breakup of our country. It's, 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 it's something where I think everyone who, who recognizes that the United Kingdom's been an enormous force for good in the world should really be very worried about. Mm. We should be very troubled by that. You know, the breaking up into these sort of mini many national states within the United Kingdom, I think, will be a disaster. Yeah. And, and you're right, one other thing quickly. Of course, of course, Her Majesty, the Queen has presided over this period of, of, of peace and, and union, and I worry enormously about what comes after, as everyone does. Yeah, well, we'll be debating it later, about, specifically about the future of the monarchy, but it is, it is troubling times for people who believe in the United Kingdom and Great Britain and the monarchy. This is a worrying yeah. time, and there's no getting away from that. I want to turn to your book, uh, Douglas. It's a terrific book, The War on the West. Specifically, I want to talk about the way we're treating historic heroes, not just Winston Churchill, who was voted the greatest Britain of all, although the Queen would run him a close second, I think, um, but also American presidents, the founding fathers, Abraham Lincoln yeah. and so on. Um, what you're seeing is the slow chipping away of legacies of towering figures uh, who I believe the totality of their achievement should outweigh the negatives, which go with any human being. Of course. But talk, first of all, about Churchill, because he's coming under increasing attack from the woke brigade. You know, they portray That's him right. as a yeah. white supremacist, a racist, somebody who did evil things and shouldn't be considered great in any shape or form. What's your response to that? Yeah, they, they basically find him guilty of some Victorian attitudes, which, as you know, if, if you're born in Victorian England, you might well have some Victorian attitudes. Surprise, surprise. If you're born in the 19th century, it turns out you don't have all of 2022's views. Um, but you're right. I mean, the, the anti-Westernists, which is what I think they are, is not just woke. Woke's a sort of manifestation of it. But the people who just hate the West, hate, hate the Western democracies, um, they, they keep trying to take down our hero figures. And when I first started noticing, I thought, this is very strange. You know, normally, cultural revolution, we start at the margins and move inwards. Um, uh, but, but they haven't. And I think that this is very telling. 
Uh, they have come for Winston Churchill and are defaming his reputation. And this isn't just the fringes, this isn't just some protesters uh, graffitiing his statues. You know, it's, it's, it's things like the BBC, who now never run a story about Churchill without running a link to a page of the ten worst crimes of Winston Churchill. Uh, we have, we have um, his own, the college named after him at Cambridge, running panels about his alleged racism and much mm. more. And, and when I noticed this, I thought, this is strange. And then I looked at America and it's the same thing. In America, the same thing of finding people guilty of being born in the past and having some attitudes of the past has been used to justify the removals of statues of the family. I mean, the lowest Father, moment for Abraham me, Douglas, Lincoln. I thought the worst moment for me was when you had the Black Lives Matter protests in London and they had to board up the statues in Parliament Square right. of Churchill, Mandela and Gandhi. Three of the great right. figures, really, of the last hundred years had to be protected from a mob that may want to yeah. deface them and scrawl horrible graffiti on them. And I That's thought right. that was such well, a they... depressing moment. The, the, no, nobody passes this test, Piers. That's the crucial thing. Right. Nobody passes the test. You know, it, as, as, I, as I say in The War on the West, you know, it, it, even, if you, even if you take some of the criticisms of Churchill, and like all people, he's a bit flawed, everybody is. But even if you take those criticisms, you know, does, does, does standing alone against Adolf Hitler and being more important than any other individual uh, for seeing Nazism beaten back, does that count for nothing? Yeah. You know, so what if he liked to drink on the side? So, so what if he said some things that we don't agree with today? That should count in the plus side. Same thing with Abraham Lincoln. Does freeing the slaves count for nothing? Apparently not now. Uh, Abraham Lincoln in America has the same treatment. At the point, even Gandhi, who you just mentioned, yeah. gets the same treatment. Nobody is good enough uh, for these people who believe that history starts with them and only they, in 2022, know what's right and wrong. These yeah. people, of course, are doing something very, very wicked, very quickly. They, are, they know that if they take out Churchill, they will take out Britishness at a very mm. fundamental level. If they take out Jefferson and Lincoln, they've taken out America. Mm. It's no less than an assault at the very fundamentals of our identity and our right to feel pride in our own history. I completely agree. And I think if you can't acknowledge that human... People are flawed and complicated and have good and bad sides to them, whoever they are. Nobody is right. completely saintly. You know, I've seen people now trying to rubbish Mother Teresa. It's like, really? Really? You think the totality of Mother Teresa's life is that she's an evil woman? And I'm sure the Queen was, will get it too when yeah. she passes on. It's like, just give it a rest. You know, we're allowed to the have Lady heroes Astor statue. who aren't perfect. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, Churchill the Lady me... Astor statue only went up a couple of years ago. Yeah, exactly. And there already calls for it to come down. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, so... <laughs> It's ridiculous. <laughs> Douglas, uh, it's a great book, The War on the West. Great to have you on. Uh, please come back. Great Love to see having you. Love having you as a guest. Appreciate it.